Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to our webinar on Healthcare API Interoperability and Implementation Guideline for the CMS Rule. My name is Amanda Kotalavala. I'm a senior business analyst at WSO2 Solutions Architecture Team. And along with me, today I have Glenn Dice, who is a director of solutions architecture at WSO2. Today, we are going to discuss the API interoperability and guidelines for implementation for the CMS interoperability and patient access final rule. Before we start, a few housekeeping items to announce. Feel free to ask any questions you have using the Q&A tab. We will try to answer your questions as much as possible during the session or at the end of the session. Also, we will be recording this session and will share the recording along with the slides at the end of the webinar via email. Thank you for joining this webinar and let's get started. Before we jump into the deep technical topics, I want you to look at this picture for two seconds and think of the words that come to your mind. Well, these are the words that came to my mind. Isolated, disjoint, poor communication, and disconnect. Now, let's look at this picture and see what do you think about it. This is what I thought. All together, sharing, good communication, and interconnected. Having that in your mind, let's start talking about the keyword of the session, interoperability. This is one of the words that you are going to hear mostly during the next 30 to 45 minutes. According to the Healthcare Information and Management System Society, interoperability is the ability of different healthcare information systems, devices, and applications to access, exchange, and integrate and cooperatively use data in a coordinated manner Within, the, within and across the organizations and systems. Obviously, lack of this interoperability is one of the critical global issues in the current healthcare ecosystem. If we go back to my previous slide, look at the picture on your left side as a silent system which does not interconnect with other healthcare systems, devices, or applications. In this system, you never can see the full picture of a patient as his or her data resides in different disconnected systems. On the other hand, the right side picture interprets the interoperable healthcare system, which integrates with other systems, exchanging information and provides a holistic view of a patient among hospitals insurance companies, and etc. Interoperability is not a new concept to the healthcare industry. In 1987, the Health Level 7, HL7 organization was formed to address the need of interoperability and over the last 30 years, it has evolved gradually. HL7 released its first version of Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources, in other words, FIRE, in 2011. FIRE is a standard describing data formats and elements and API for exchanging electronic health records. The latest version you can find in the market is the FIRE standard, FIRE R4. Most of the government institutions, centers, and regional organizations around the world recognize the importance of interoperability and standardizing the exchange of electronic health data. Therefore, they have started introducing new rules and regulations around it. Recently announced 
CMS interoperability and patient access final role. CMS 9115F is one of those roles. Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, an agency of the US Department of Health and Human Services, issued this rule. And this rule basically includes three main policies. Patient access API policy, provider directory API policy, and the payer to payer data exchange policy. As you can see in this pic picture, Snap, this is the snapshot of the enforcement date of this rule. The finalized new policies has to be enforced by July 1st, 2021. Also, the Health and Human Services Department has finalized Fire R4 as the technical standard for CMS rule and to define the content and structure of core health data, which can be used by developers to build standardized applications. Next, let's see what these new policies mean to stakeholders in the healthcare ecosystem. CMS rule mainly applies to payer category of the healthcare ecosystem. CMS regulated payers are required to implement and maintain a secure standard-based HL7 Fire APIs that allows patients to easily access their claims and view information by patient access API policy. According to provider directory API policy, they have to make provider directory information publicly available via these APIs. Finally, they have to exchange certain patient data among the payers at the patient's request as per the payer to payer data exchange policy. Even though these rules directly matter to payers, at the same time, providers and patients get benefits out of it too. With the use of APIs, providers get an opportunity to improve the usability of electronic health records, EHRs, and enable physicians to easily access and search for patient health records. Also, patients can easily and securely access their EHRs on their own electronic devices. They get better visibility and transparency between them and providers as well. Finally, avoiding the payer locking they are enabled to move from one facility to another without spending time and additional cost. After all, the CMS rule aims to enable better access to health information for patients, improve interoperability, and give more opportunities for the innovation. As I mentioned before, this rule mainly applies to payers and out of them, these are the main payer provisions who have to be enforced with the CMS rule. Medicare Advantage plans, Medicaid managed care plans, children's health insurance programs managed care plans, children's health insurance programs state agencies, qualified health plan issuers for federally facilitated exchanges, and finally, state Medicaid agencies. Now we know what is the CMS rule, how it matters to and to whom it applies. Next, let's see how to get prepared for compliance. Obviously, when you are stepping into the real execution, you have to face different challenges and obstacles. The first and the main challenge that you have to face is the aggressive timelines. You have nearly seven months left for the enforcement date and have to work aggressively to meet the regulation. The next challenge is the lack of clarity on compliance requirement. If you have seen the regulation document, it has 100 plus pages and it covers some of the complex requirements of the rule. 
the next challenge is lack of in-house expertise if you do not have all the required domain expertise and the technology expertise within your organization that becomes a great challenge for you in some cases if you might not have allocated enough fundings for implementing these policies and the technological requirements that becomes another challenge finally lack of clear internal strategy is another obstacle for your compliance or in interoperability journey if you have not identified the innovative interoperability journey for your organization beyond the cms rule you have to figure it out despite all these challenges you can look at this interoperability as an innovative business opportunity hence we have identified four steps to address these challenges and help you to start your interoperability compliance journey easily first step would be to analyze the compliance readiness of your organization in this stage you need to analyze your internal technologies internal processes your data sources data flows and data formats in terms of compliance readiness if you have any process blockers or data latency you can identify and understand them at this very first stage the second step would be to alleviate data mapping risk in this stage you can figure out the effort you need to put to map your data in different sources and in different formats to the fhir format there can be uncertainties due to unstructured data you can assess the risk attached to these uncertainties at this stage and incorporate the contingencies when you are estimating the effort required for the data mapping process the next step or the third step would be to foresee data quality issues as payers sometimes you cannot be fully accountable for the accuracy and the completeness of the clinical data you receive from third parties however again as payers when you are exposing the data according to the cms rule you need to address any of the data quality concerns coming from your members in order to tackle this you can initiate a process for responding and escalating the data quality concerns the final step would be the most critical step in your preparation it is the evaluate vendor solution if your organization doesn't have required in-house expertise and established API management strategies getting cms compliance would be a challenge with given aggressive timelines and complex requirements of the cms rule in this case the best option is to evaluate a suitable vendor solution and partner with them in your compliance journey now my colleague glen is ready to talk about how to evaluate vendor solutions in more detail and figure out api driven healthcare integration platforms in the next few slides over to you glen thanks amanda let me let me get get set up so i can show my screen okay so he hello everyone like amanda said my name is glenn dice and i like to uh, uh finish this this topic uh and go into a little more of the uh the uh, technical detail so let's start out and let's start talking about api driven healthcare integration so how to evaluate vendors uh for these healthcare solutions uh, and these cms rulings so you may have different deployment requirements today or in the future, whether they are infrastructure options like deploying on on prime or on premise environments, a cloud or multi cloud environment, or a combination of on prem and cloud in a hybrid cloud deployment. Your requirements may be for 
deployment on virtual machines or on containers, or even on more traditional approach of deploying on bare metal. One of the key components of evaluating a vendor solution is, is security. Does the vendor support Open ID Connect for authorization and authentication to verify the identity of the end user? Open ID Connect is a requirement by the CMS rule when dealing with and sharing information and data with third party apps. Does the vendor support consent management for apps and data? Does the end user or patient have consent or control of what they want to share and what they do not wish to share with third parties and how often they give consent to share their information? The interoperability CMS rule is about leveraging new and modern technologies. One of these new technologies is utilizing FHIR APIs. So a solution must have a purpose-built API integration platform, and that platform should support core API capabilities like API marketplace, API products, API monetization, and also API rate limiting. Along with API platform, you need a purpose-built integration engine that can handle current and future simple or complex integration requirements. In addition to the FHIR based on RESTful JSON standard, healthcare integration transformations also may include other formats like HL7, X12, EDI, CDA, XML, or other custom formats and direct database connectivity. So, so today we see that there are three kinds of healthcare integration solution vendors out in the marketplace today. Uh, they are API integration solution vendors, niche solution vendors, and hybrid solution vendors. We'll now take a look at each of these different kinds of vendor solutions. First, we start with API integration vendor solution. The API integration vendors need to have the ability and ex expertise to execute on their healthcare solution. They must have strong presence in the enterprise integration and the API management market with past success with clients in the integration space. A, pre a, a prerequisite should be that the vendor is a experienced healthcare integration and fire focused solution with teams to support their API-driven healthcare solution and should include integration developers, professional integration services, and integration support teams with a 24 by 7 by 365 day model to support them. Now moving on to the niche and hybrid vendor solution. Uh, so first, we'll cover the niche vendors. The niche vendors are usually provide a specialized function in the healthcare environment, and they typically build solutions as the need arises. These niche vendors can pose a risk due to their lack of expertise with the underlying integration technologies and support for the healthcare integration solution in the integration vendor space. <clears throat> the third vendor solution we're going to cover are hybrid solutions. Healthcare clients will require different deployment options. They will need the flexibility of being able to run in different and multiple environments. These hybrid vendors need to support on-premise environments, hybrid clouds, or, multi or multiple cloud environments. The deployments can be deployed on either bare metal, virtual machines, or containers. Deployment flexibility is a key question that should be asked of vendors. The vendor you select should have the flexibility to deploy the healthcare integration solution where you, the client, need it to be deployed for the present and for the future. So, what are the key questions you should ask healthcare vendors concerning their respective fire server solutions? Uh, what features should you be worried about when selecting a healthcare integration solution? 
Another question is, you know, who who has been in the industry and know the space very well? And it may not just be around healthcare, uh, but around all the other uh, other verticals uh, uh, like retail and so on. So you really want you know a vendor that has that expertise. Uh, there are many more questions that that you may have around selecting uh, uh, vendors. So in the next couple of slides, we will introduce what capabilities that you should be looking for in a fire server. What we see as the three core capabilities in a successful fire server solution are, uh, the first is the most important core capability in the CMS rule is API management. The CPS, the CMS interoperability rule is all about APIs and more importantly, fire APIs. So API capabilities is a must. And we will go into more detail of what features to look for in an API management solution. The second core capability is application integration. Application integration is a much needed complement to the API management component. It performs operations like connectivity, transformation, and data mapping. And then lastly, security. The authentication authorization of users and systems by using OAuth 2 and OpenID Connect is, is a must. We will go into more details of, uh, of each of these later. So the, the, the uh, di diagram you see depicts those three core capabilities we discussed in the previous slide, along with the key capabilities of each of those core capabilities. So first, let's start with the top layer, the API management layer. Every successful API manager must have certain key capabilities. They must have a developer portal where developers can create manage and improve on their APIs. Then there is an API storefront where you would expose the APIs for internal and or external API consumers. The storefront or, or could be called developer portal is where the potential API consumers can access information on the APIs, its functionality, and have the ability the ability to test out the APIs before consuming that particular API. You should have the ability to throttle back APIs based on users, based on API calls over a certain period of time, and how often an API is requested of. APIs should be secured and have a managed life cycle for those APIs. Now let's move to the middle layer of the application layer. This layer is about decoupling the clients from the service providers and transform the data into the correct format or performing transport protocol switching. An application integration tool should also have the ability to enhance messages and the ability, the ability to intelligently route the messages based on the content in the message to the correct destination or destinations. Another key component are transactional management and process service orchestration. Lastly, let's look at the bottom layer, which is security. It's about how to authenticate and authorize end users and or systems. A key component of that, per the CMS rule, is Open ID Connect and the support of it in the vendor solution. Open ID Connect helps to secure exposing APIs with the function of handling and authentication and authorization. The need to support single sign-on, manage identities, and the ability to support identity federation across multiple identity providers in even any given environment, and converting user stores are all also key components to the security of the healthcare environment. Now let's talk about the WSO2 Open Healthcare Platform. 
a little insight on who we are and what we do. We are an open source middleware and security organization offering solutions in middleware and security for over 15 years. We have many years of experience dealing with small, medium, and large customers who are using our solutions across not only healthcare, but across all other different vertical markets like banking, retail, education, government, and so on. Now let me introduce you to our WSO2 healthcare solution. Our open healthcare solution is built on top of our industry leading open source integration platform. Our open healthcare solutions allow for increased interoperability in healthcare systems by utilizing new technologies and easier connectivity utilizing our API driven approach. Our API solution transfers and consolidates patient information, including prescriptions, medical history, and treatment records. This ensures healthcare professionals have all the information they need about a patient. Our APIs also help patients quickly and easily access their own medical records. This allows patients to take care of themselves because they can access treatments like lab results and other healthcare communications without needing to see a doctor in person. All this must be done in a secure and seamless fashion to to ensure security of the user and the data, which is why our solution is Open ID Connect certified. Our open healthcare platform includes health data transformation with pre-built fire accelerators for rapid implementation. Also, our solution will help you meet those fast approaching CMS deadlines by July of 2021 and position you for, for future CMS deadlines that may arise uh, uh, in the future. The, the diagram you see in our WSO2 Open Healthcare Platform Reference Architecture. So in a typical healthcare system, you have different data sources, as you can see at the bottom of the diagram. Those data sources could be from wearable devices like Apple Watch or a Fitbit device. Uh, they could be from EMR systems like Cerner and Epic. There are health data re repositories and databases that you may need to connect with. Uh, there's also services to integrate, and you may have to deal with SaaS applications to take in account for those integrations also. Our WSO2 solution provider, you get a set of EMR connectors that can connect to Cerner and Epic systems uh, that are available to you free of charge uh, uh, when you when you purchase our, our uh, healthcare platform. As you connect to data sources, you may see that data sources may be in different data formats and not yet in the fire format. So you'll need to convert them into the fire format in order to expose the proper fire RESTful API. To assist you with that transformation from one format to the FHIRE format, we have pre-built FHIRE data mapping connectors available to you to help you with any transformation that you may have, like mapping from HL7 version 2 to FHIRE standards, or any custom data types that you may have that you need to convert to the FHIRE format. We provide FHIRE validators that validate the in incoming FHIRE messages as well as being able to do testing on that data. There are many more fire accelerators that we are currently building today. And as new extensions to the standards are created, we will be adding new accelerators for those new extensions. After you have exposed and transformed your data, the next step is to expose that data services using a managed API. As a managed API, it should be properly secured and governed. It should be able to be rate limited to set boundaries on how often an API is accessed, when, when it is accessed, and by whom it, is, it can be accessed by. Our FHIRE API Definition Hub is where API and integration developers 
can view and download the API definitions in Swagger or open API specification format and use them in the healthcare platform and start exposing Fire APIs in our Fire server to your external application vendors. WSO2 is OpenID Connect certified for your authentication and authorization security needs. There's also a developer portal or storefront where application vendors, application vendor developers can come and view the available APIs and the ability to try them out before deciding to consume them or not. You can build smart on fire application using our fire server that is exposed from the WSO2 platform. The platform also has analytics capabilities as well. You can, you can do real time and historical analytics as well as monetization of your APIs that you have exposed. So, so why, why WSO2 Open Healthcare? Well, there's a, there's, there's a few, there's a few reasons that, that, that we feel that, that we have a very good offering uh, that I think sets us uh, in front of other other uh, healthcare uh, fire server vendors. Uh, one of those is beyond CMS rules. With our solution, with our solution, you can build on top of what you have implemented for the current CMS rules and have the backbone in place for future requirements. We also have auto generative fire accelerators. Our solution has the ability to automatically generate fire connectors by reading the fire specification. This enables you to, de to develop integrations faster for any fire extension that may come into effect in the future. We can also auto generate capability statements. You just select or build your fire APIs and we'll take care of generating the capability statement for you. Uh, and that is one of the CMS rules that every fire server must have a capability statement. So, so we actually we actually look at the APIs that you've selected and use that metadata and 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 form that into to that that uh, uh, capability statement for you. Uh, we also have Fire API definitions. Our pre-built API definitions are available in Swagger and Open API specification format to use in the healthcare platform and ex and start exposing your Fire APIs. Uh, our tools are low code in integrations. Our integration tools are low code, GUI based, drag and drop capabilities. So no need for deep developer coding skills to write integration logic. We also have visual data mapping, uh, which is advanced integration to non-standard backend data sources using a powerful visual data mapping tool for those different kinds of uh, mapping or custom mapping. Uh, we also support uh, with our pre-built data mapping for HL7 and for X12. I mentioned earlier we have out-of-the-box pre-built EM, EMR connectors for Cerner and Epic. Uh, as I mentioned also, we are OpenID Connect and OAuth2 certified. Uh, so for, for, for any kind of authentication and authorization, uh, uh, that is our solution around the, around the security stuff. We support identity federation as a mechanism that allows authentication across different enterprises and different trust domains based on a trust factor. Deploy in any infrastructure of your choice. We are, we are deployment agnostic. We support on-prem, uh, we support cloud, and we support hybrid cloud. You can run our solution on bare metal, virtual machines, or containers. Also mentioned earlier around our consent management uh, APIs in our solution, which collects and manages end user consents when user information is shared with external par parties. We support decentralized deployments. Uh, we support both centralized and, and decentralized deployments. For our decentralized, we do offer deploying on microservice architecture, utilizing containers such as Docker and container orchestration such as Kubernetes. We support multi-tenancy. Uh, we provide federated access to multiple entities in a large organization. Uh, for example, the departments of an enterprise can publish and use their own APIs, 
but also having the option to make some of the APIs available to other departments in the organization. So how can we help you to become compliant with the CMS rule? We have partnered and are working with some of the best healthcare domain knowledge partners in, in the US and, and in the world. By doing this, we have combined our world-class advanced security enforced API integration technology and our partners healthcare domain knowledge and expertise to provide you with a turnkey solution to help you meet the interoperability and patient access final CMS rule. In our experiences and working with our partners, we, we feel that we can have you compliant within three to six months. Uh, this will also lay the groundwork for future requirements like the provider directory API, payer-to-payer -payer data exchange, and many other rules that will come out in the future from the CMS. So, so, so call to action. How can we help you around this around the CMS uh, uh, rule? So we have multiple resources and information on open healthcare solutions and more resources becoming available daily. Uh, so please visit our WSO2 healthcare page for the latest information. Also reach out to us by using the requested demo on our healthcare webpage. Once we get your request, we will then set up a time to demo our solution. You can also click on our try it out button to access our open healthcare sandbox where you can experiment with our platform in our WSO2 sandbox. We also offer uh, uh, introductory sessions and white papers where you can, you, you can go to and, and get to speed on our, our solution at your own pace uh, and learn more about our, our offering. Also check back at our healthcare homepage to see what new webinars, white papers, blogs, and articles that we have released. Uh, and we, you'll see more and more released uh, over the next weeks and months. So th this is really a screen screenshot. As I mentioned earlier, this is our WSO2 open healthcare uh, open page. And I mentioned that uh, there's a schedule, a demo button that you can select and that will pass your information on, on to us and then we'll reach out to you to set up a time and date for a uh, for a demo and, and a, a more technical presentation. Uh, if you want to go out to our WSO2 sandbox, there's a try it out page where you can uh, uh, try it out and there's a viewer guide button also to kind of walk you through the steps of, of, of actually trying it out in the sandbox. So that 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 concludes our uh, presentation. Uh, do we have any questions out there, Amanda? So I, I do see one one question. Have the deadlines been extended six months based on the rules released last week? Uh, and also, I'll have Amanda help me with this. But I do know that 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 there was talk about extending the rules uh, uh, for another six months due to, due to the COVID situation. Now, uh, I haven't seen anything that has said that, has, that it has extended the rules yet, but uh, uh, if it was just put out in the last couple of days, it very well could have. So we'll, we will uh, go and, uh, and see if that, that is true and we will uh, uh, add that additional information to our webpage to uh, let you know that if those rules have been extended by six months. Looking to see if there's any any other questions out there. And as of now, I do not see any other questions. So, uh, th so another question did come in. Are we going to direct market this solution to our healthcare customers. So I mentioned earlier, we're we're dealing with, we're working with other other uh, other healthcare professionals. We're working with other professional services group. So with that, with our solution, uh, you can purchase this solution directly from WSO2 ourselves. Uh, we are working with other other resellers of the solution, 
uh, uh, and other partners where uh, in the future, hopefully you can you can purchase from one of our reseller partners. Uh, if you need assistance with getting the uh, getting the solution up quickly and off the ground, uh, we will be working with professional services groups that will come in in a turnkey uh, uh, in a turnkey solution, and we will work with those guys to get you up and running as soon as possible. Hopefully, the goal is between three and six months. So another question, would you provide a recording to this event? So yes, everyone on the recording will actually be sent a copy of the presentation and also a copy of the actual recording uh, uh, from today. How has WSO2 been adapting to the updates being made with Defensi and, and Corin Resources? So so yeah, so within, within our cell, Within our WSO2 accelerators, uh, we do cover uh, uh, DaVinci and Karen deployments. So uh, we do have pre-built connectors, pre-built accelerators for for that. So we, we do cover the the uh, DaVinci and the Karen uh, uh, implementation. Okay, so I think at this point, I do not see any other uh, questions. Uh, Amanda, I don't know if you, you have anything to add before before we, we wrap up, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll ask you if you have any closing comments also. We have uh, one last question. Uh, sure. uh, let me answer that question before we wrap up. The question is, uh, are all US, uh, health insurance firms as payers required to comply with the CMS rule and fire. Yes, all the payers has to be uh, comply with this. And um, uh, during the presentation, we mentioned uh, specific uh, provisions of payer category, which has to uh, comply with this. So they will be the prioritized uh, category. And, uh, but later on, the, uh, all the payers um, has to comply with this rule. So, I think that's all from our end. Uh, if we don't have any questions, we can wrap up, I guess. Okay, thank you, Amanda. And and I want to thank everyone for joining today and be looking in your inbox for a copy of the presentation and also a copy of the uh, recording. And if that is everything, hope everyone has a good day and thanks for joining. Bye-bye.